Hey, welcome back to Arithmetic with Ron. Today we're going to look at adding and subtracting fractions, but we're going to compare two methods, the butterfly method and the least common multiples. Which is better? We'll find out today. Go ahead and hit subscribe and enjoy the video. When you are asked to add or subtract fractions that have different denominators, you have a couple different tools that you can use to solve this problem. What I'm going to do today is go through a couple problems and walk through the thinking process so that we can answer this question. Butterfly method, method versus least common multiple, which one is better? Both of them will work, and how do we know what to do? Let's take a look at this first example here. And when I look at this problem, what I'm thinking to myself is, are there easy clues that help me to decide if the LCM method is going to work or do I need the butterfly method? A couple things that you can do is you can look at combinations of these denominators and multiply them and then check and see if the other one fits. 2 times 3 is 6. Well, 6 and 5 don't fit into each other. 5 times 2 is 10 and 3 doesn't fit into that. So after a couple examples looking at combinations of denominators, I don't see anything that divides evenly into the other. And so this problem is a good example of using the butterfly method. Okay, let's review that quick. When you add two fractions, you're going to multiply the diagonals and add them together. Let's do that. 3 times 2 is 6. 5 times 1 is 5, and we're going to divide that by the product or the multiplication of the two denominators. 5 times 2 is 10, okay? So now we get 11 over 10 plus what we had left over, 1 third. Can't forget about him. And now we're going to do the butterfly method again with these two fractions. So let's take 11 times 3 is 33, and we're going to add... 10 times 1 is 10, and all of that is divided by the product of the two denominators. 10 times 3 is 30. If I add those together, I get 43 over 30, and if I want to break that down into two fractions that have a denominator of 30, I can pull out a 30, which is going to give me a 1, and then 30 plus something is 43, yeah, 13. So 1 and 13 over 30 is my final answer. Now, just to show you, you could do this with LCM. And what I'm going to do is very quickly write out the skip counting at the bottom, and then we'll take a look and see if 30 is the common denominator found by the LCM method. Now, it takes a little bit, and this was a lot of writing, but if you were to study this list, you would find out that 30 is the first number that's common to all three of the skip counts. You can find other combinations in here, um, like 15 and 15 are in the 3 and 5, but they're not in the 2. So you need the first number that appears in all three, and it is 30. And in this case, because it took so long to write this out, you might say that the butterfly method is better, and that would be okay. Both of them will work, and you get to choose. But in this case, the butterfly method probably is quicker. Let's take a look at another example. How about 5 over 6 plus 1 over 3 plus 2 over 5? I want to add these together. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at couples of combinations of multiplying the denominators. All right? 6 times 5 is 30. Does 3 go into 30? Yes, it does. So in this case, we very quickly found out that 30 is a number that's going to work as a common denominator. And it's worth trying a couple combinations because if you did this and said 3 times 5 is 15... Well, that doesn't work with 6. How about 6 and 3? Well, that's 18, and 5 doesn't go into that. But here, 
checking six times five is 30, we already know 30 is gonna be the common denominator that works. And why that's interesting and worth looking for is because if you do the butterfly method, you're going to end up multiplying six and three, and you're gonna get an 18 for one denominator, and then 18 times five is 90. So if you use the butterfly method, your denominator is gonna be 90. You can still get the right answer, but you're going to be working with numbers that are much bigger than you need to. 30 is a smaller common denominator that works, and all of your numerators will be smaller if you use 30. So let's go ahead and erase this, and we'll see what happens using the LCM of 30. I know that I need five over six times a special one to give me a fraction with 30. I also need one over three, and I need two over five. Times a special one gives me a new equivalent fraction of 30. So we're gonna go through and just quickly fill in what makes the denominator true. Five times six is 30, so that's a six. Three times 10 is 30, so this is a 10. And six times five is 30, and so the top is also a five. Let's go through and multiply the numerators. Five times five is 25, one times 10 is 10, and two times six is 12. What I did here was by finding a common denominator that works quickly, I don't have to write out all the skip counting, but I still am gonna use the method of multiplying by a special one to convert the original fractions into new equivalent fractions that have a common denominator. And now I'm going to add these up. 25 over 30 plus 10 over 30 plus 12 over 30 equals something over 30, and we add these up. 25 plus 10 is 35, plus 12 is 47. So now let's take 47 over 30, and what we're going to do is write it as two fractions that have a denominator of 30, but we're going to pull out a 1. 30 over 30 is 1, and 30 plus 17 30 plus 17 is 47. So the numerator works, 30 plus 17 is 47, and I get a one plus 17 over 30. Had you done this problem with the butterfly method, these numbers would have been much larger. They would have all been three times as big because your denominator is three times as big. So in this case, the LCM method works better. Let's take a look at a third example. How about seven over eight plus one over four plus one over three? Let's check some combinations really quick. Three times four is 12 and eight doesn't multiply into that. Eight times three is 24. Does four go into 24? Yes, it does. That means that 24 is gonna work as a common denominator. Since we found something that works by checking two of the denominators, we can do this problem using LCM with smaller denominators than if we did the butterfly method. The butterfly method would give us a denominator of eight times four times three. Well, this is 32, and so it would be a denominator of 96, much bigger than what we need. So let's go ahead and erase this, and we'll work this problem really quick with a denominator of 24. Okay, I've written out the fractions, and we know we're gonna multiply by a special one and get a new common denominator of 24 in our fractions. So let's go ahead and, and do the multiplication on the denominators first. Eight times something is 24, three. And if it's three on the bottom, it needs to be three on the top. Four times something is 24, six. And three times something is 24, yeah, that's gonna be eight. Same on the top and bottom. Now we can go through and multiply the numerators. One times eight is eight. One times six is six and seven times three 
is 21. Let's go ahead and add these together quick. We get 21 over 24 plus 6 over 24 plus 8 over 24 is going to equal something over 24, and we're going to add the numerators. 6 plus 8 is 14, and 14 plus 21 is 35. And now to turn this improper fraction into a mixed number, we're going to take this and break it up into two fractions that have a denominator of 24, and I can pull out 24 to make a 1, and then something plus 24 has to add to 35, and that is 11. 11 plus 24 is 35, and this is a 1, so my final answer is 1 and 11 24ths. Let's go ahead and take a look at another example. 2 over 7 plus 1 over 5 plus 2 over 3. And what does this equal? Well, we're going to do the same thing and just check our denominators quick and see by multiplication if we get anything that works. 7 doesn't go into 15. And if I multiply 7 and 5, I get 35. Does 3 go into 35? No, it doesn't. One last combination is 7 and 3 is 21, and 5 does not go into 21. So here, because the LCM is not working with multiplying combinations of our denominators, let's go ahead and do that butterfly method. I'm going to start with the first two fractions, 2 over 7 plus 1 over 5. We're going to multiply the diagonals, so 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 times 7 is 7, and we're going to divide that by the product of these two denominators, 7 times 5 is 35, okay? This fraction is 17 over 35. And now we have to remember that there's a third one, so I'm going to add it to 2 plus, not 2 plus 3, 2 divided by 3. Now I have these two fractions, and I'm going to do the butterfly method again. So the diagonals, 17 times 3 is 51, plus this diagonal, 2 times 35 is 70, and the denominator, 35 times 3, is 105. Okay? Now what we can do is add these numerators together, and we will get 121 over 105. If you want to take that number and write it as a mixed number, it's an improper fraction right now, if we want to write it as a mixed number, we're going to have both of our denominators are 105, and if I pull out 105, I know that this is 1, and I need something over here that when I add it to 105, it gets me back to 121. Let's just check real quick. Sixteen. Sixteen is the number that makes this top numerator math a true statement. So now I have 1 plus 16 over 105, or 1 and 16 one-hundred-and-fifths. Let's take a look at one final example. What is 4 over 9 plus 1 over 3 plus 2 over 9. What does that equal? Real quick, if we were to use the butterfly method, we would have 9 times 9 is 81, and then multiplied by 3, you would have a denominator of 243. And while you can do this and get the correct answer, when we look at this, we see that already a 3 can multiply into the 9s. 3, if you write out its skip counting, 3, 6, 9, look, it's going to hit 9. What that tells us, this problem will actually go much quicker, because what that tells us is that we only have to change this middle fraction 
to get a common denominator. If nine is the new common denominator, then I'm gonna leave four over nine, and I'm going to leave two over nine, and this middle one, one over three, we're gonna convert him into a new equivalent fraction with a common denominator of nine. So I need a common denominator of nine, and that's gonna make all of our denominators nine. What do I need to multiply by to get a common denominator of nine? Three times three is nine. If three is on the bottom, three must be on the top, and one times three is three. So I've rewritten this one-third as an equivalent fraction of three-ninths. So they have the same value, but now with a common denominator of nine, I can add these fractions together, and I never had to change these two fractions. So that's where the LCM method can speed things up if you recognize smaller denominators that will work. Four plus three is seven. Seven plus two is nine. And the final answer to this problem is simply one. Now, had you done this with the butterfly method and worked with a denominator of 243, you can still get to an answer of one, but all of the numbers in your numerators would have been far bigger. It's a lot of math, takes a little extra time. So the final answer on this, which is better? The answer is it depends. If you can find combinations of the denominators two at a time that multiply into something that works for all three, great. You can find a smaller common denominator that works. But like the previous example, where we had seven, five, and three as a denominator, there wasn't anything that worked. And the butterfly method will help you to solve the problem. Well, thanks for watching. I hope that you saw that there's not a right answer all the time. Sometimes LCM is better, and sometimes the butterfly method is more effective. You just have to take a look and do a little thinking. Go ahead and add any comments. Let me know what you'd like to see in the future, what your favorite method was, and if you have any other problems that you want to take a look at. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time.